Eight years ago was September 11th, 2001, a date which we know will live in infamy for being, I think, the worst um, terrorist act ever committed against, uh, well, the United States of America. And, um, you know, I think today is a day we should all remember that, um, if you're old enough to remember it, that is. Um, you know, back then I was 11 years old, and really I just want to share my story with you guys, how I heard about it, and um, just, yeah, I'm not going to give you really the whole history of the day. You can, you know, read that somewhere else, but I want to share you guys, uh, I'm sorry, share with you what happened with me. And September 11, 2001, I had just turned 11 years old that prior uh, July, that morning, Prox, I'm gonna guess 6:30, maybe a little later. Um, my mom walks into my bedroom. I open, or I'm sorry, I wake up right as she uh, opens the door. I'm, I wake up fairly easily, and she looked at me. I looked at her, and she said, "Andrew, something terrible has happened." Um, I don't remember the tone, but I heard that. I'm like, "What does that mean? Does that mean?" grandma died does that mean there's a big old robbery next door and there's hostages you know i don't know do some what happened so i followed her out to the family room where my stepdad was uh, sitting on a chair watching uh cnn my mother and i just leaned against the back of the couch and watched at that moment the first tower had already been struck i believe the north tower and you know about Three quarters of the way up, I mean, smoke was just rising up, and flames were just going out of control. And, you know, CNN has those captions, and it says something like, you know, plane struck North Tower of the World Trade Center uh, buildings, something like that. And I don't remember this at the time, but I remember hearing about it after the fact. When the first building got struck, you know, people thought it was a mechanical error or a pilot air you know it was faulty something was faulty within the aircraft uh people thought oh maybe he t made a wrong turn i don't know but then an hour later and i witnessed this on television was when the second one hit uh, and we all know this picture i'm gonna i know i'm gonna try to put a picture here maybe it'll bring back bad memories of course it brings back bad me do i need to say um of the you know, here's the building and the plane going in, but then just go in out the other side, just big old fireball, smoke going all over the place, papers that were inside the building fluttering all over to the ground. I mean, just, and that was when it really hit everyone that, hey, this is not a just a coincidence pilot took wrong turn. This is like guy number A, I'm sorry, guy A knows guy B. These guys work together. These guys are terrorists. And that's when it really hit everyone that uh, it was a lot more than, like I said, a coincidence. And um, I didn't, I think after the second one was hit, you know, I took shower, ate breakfast, got ready for school. Because um, I think it was like a Wednesday. And um, went to school. My teacher only turned on TV for like 10 minutes. I was really quite ticked because I didn't know what was going on. I think both, actually no, by that time when he turned it on, I don't think either tower had fell. I don't think so. Um, but when I got home, everything was done. Everything was wiped out. Both buildings down to the ground in a huge pile of debris. And uh, I remember watching really that next week, month, year. Uh, it still continues now. Of images, video, uh, news footage of, you know, people wa walking or running down the street after the, you know, building had collapsed. And there's just, it, you know, comes down and just smoke just goes down the streets every way. And um, people are, like, running for their lives. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, but, like, it's Godzilla. I mean, they're running down the street in utter just horror and sh disbelief and shock and you know seeing people covered literally head to toe in ash and dust and pulverized glass and 
I mean, pul- really pulverized everything because it was all phew, turned into little tiny debris in a matter of seconds after they both came down. So, and um, I, you know, going back, I think I do remember seeing one of the buildings fall, um, but it was just. <laughs> After school and just hearing about it, I was just so shocked. And, I mean, everyone was. One thing I wanted to mention, too, is, you know, right after, really, the after the second one was hit, uh, you know, I'm going to, this is not really my story anymore. I'm going off a little bit. But, I mean, people started committing suicide because, really, if, they, if their life was going to be taken, they wanted to take it. They didn't want to have some... Uh, ignorant, you know, moronic terrorists take it. I want to bring to your attention also a picture, uh, and I'll put post them both right here. Um, the one picture that kind of really just, I don't know, touches my heart about this whole moment is after the fact, when there's just a huge pile of debris, there's a picture taken, and you most likely have seen it. Uh, it is very, very much so similar to the picture taken atop Mount Suribachi, after the uh, Americans took over uh, Iwo Jima, there was you know three was a yeah three firemen uh, raising a flag, and right like I said right behind them a pile probably hundreds of feet high of debris, and it's just I, honestly I'm speechless I don't know what to say about that picture but it's just it's just is like you know what in the midst of all this. You know, stuff that happened. You know, people died. Thousands of people died. You know, we're still a country. You know, don't forget about that. We're still a we're still a country. We're the USA, uh, USA. You know, strongest country really in the world. So, don't don't forget about that part. And um, that picture, I just I love that picture. And like I said, in the midst of all that horror, destruction, that picture is just. Great. Uh, that night, I didn't. I've only. I think I've only told one person in my life this. That night, after we all knew it was a t- terrorist act by the Al Qaeda. Um, literally, I'm not gonna. I mean, as as much of a man as I am, as uh, hard as it is to make me cry, as hard as it is to even hurt my feelings. That night, um, gotta be honest, I cried myself asleep. Um, cause I was, I couldn't believe how many people had died. What, and how big of an idiot you must be to do such a thing. And I cried myself asleep, not just crying myself asleep, but singing every single patriotic song I ever heard in my life. You know, the, uh, Star Spangled Banner, Pledge of Allegiance even. I mean, and uh, another song I don't really know the title of, but I heard, I remember singing it way back in kindergarten. So... And it was just that day, really, you know, I think it's the worst day of really anyone's life. Um, like I, I think I said in the beginning, it's, you know, in my my mind, it's the worst um, act of terrorism, the worst destruction I have ever seen occur in this country. And this video, I just want to... Uh, share you guys, uh, share with you my memories, even though I'm way in the Central Valley here in California, and now it's way on the other side of the country. I just want to share with you, I mean, being 11 years old, you know, it didn't physically, you know, hurt me, but just being an American and felt like some, you know, like my, <laughs> my land was being intruded upon with these guys. I mean, it just, it just hurts, so... Again, feel free to leave your own comments, your own stories, where you were, who told you, yada, yada, yada. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And um, I know some of the pictures were kind of uh, maybe uh, put a tear in your eye, but it's a day to remember and never a day to forget. I will remember for the rest of my life.